Invitations are out, RSVP's coming in. Vincent, you're doing music. Okay, so I'm gonna do balloons and food. You're gonna do cake? Yes, cake. Look, just so you know, Jillian is upset that you hired a caterer. She really wanted to cook everything for mom as her gift. Look, I, I love Jillian, but the best gift she could give mom is um, not cooking. No, no offense. Did you get the slides yet? I get them tomorrow. Okay, so we all have to be hiding when mom comes in. You know, most of the guests are going to be mom's age or older. You, you really want to ask them to crouch behind the sofa? Yeah, you got a point. Uh, okay, no hiding. <laughs> uh, wait, who's going to get the mint chip ice cream? Mom loves that. Not with cake. With cake, she just likes vanilla. You've been spending too much time here. Yeah, at least I don't live here. Would you get uh, mint chip and vanilla? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> That's right. See, this judge thing is not good for you. You're too bossy to begin with. I'm just trying to make sure we do everything right. This is mom we're talking about. That's right. That's why I don't think we should be doing it. Mom, hi. I, I thought you would If be... I had to listen to one more story about Dolores' cruise, you'd think the woman had never seen a buffet before. What are you doing here? Peter? Just leaving, actually. Uh, night, Mom. No, hold on. I have something I want you to do for me. What is it? It's a living will. What? A what? A living will. It just says I don't want any of you to go to any extra trouble keeping me alive if I should get hurt or sick. Extra trouble? Life support. Uh, artificial resuscitation, that sort of thing. You have to read, then sign at the bottom so that I know that you've comprehended it. Mama, are, are you feeling all right? Is anything... Oh, never better, actually. This is ridiculous. Well, maybe ridiculous to you, but it's my life and my death, if I so choose. Read it thoroughly. No skimming. That will be your present to me. And that's the last I want to hear about my birthday. You were just doing it. You gotta trust me on this one. I don't wanna do this anymore. Maybe bike riding isn't my kind of thing. No, you wanted a two-wheeler for Christmas. You can't just change your mind. Why? Because it costs money. You could sell it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sweetie. Bike riding is like swimming. It's not an optional thing. You gotta learn. Besides, it makes you feel good to learn new things. No, it doesn't. Lauren! I'm a terrible mother. Yeah, but you look good. I was trying to teach her how to ride a bike. I totally lost it. Turned into mom. Wait, you told her that it was her civic duty? People in China built an entire society by riding bikes? <laughs> okay, I didn't go that far. This is Michael's job. Oh, it's a father thing. It's a little sexist, don't you think? No. I promised her he'd do it. He keeps forgetting. He lives in New York City. He's gonna teach her how to hail a cab. Maybe I could teach her. Hey, go with God. Mom, leave you? Yeah, but not before getting me to sign the living will. You signed it? Yeah, of course I signed it. That's what she wants. Now, speaking of which... No, don't, 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 don't say it. This party is exactly what she needs. She needs to be celebrating her life, not thinking about ending it, and it's our job to teach her that. You think a piece of cake in a slideshow is going to do that? Yeah, I do. Hey, come on. Peter signed it. I'm not touching that thing. Come in. Hello, Donna. Power? Yeah, no thanks. I have another. Uh, it's okay. Okay, so here's what I found out. You can get regular old latex, which are round and come in a variety of colors. Or you can get the fancy ones, which are silver and come in all different shapes. The silver ones are a bit more expensive. So, Judge Gray, what would you like? Maybe I should just... Balloons, Bruce. We're talking about balloons. 
I know that. I, I, I just don't feel comfortable talking about that. Let's go with the latex. Really? You, you, you don't want the mylar? They have cute little sayings on them. How about a dozen of each? Oh, excellent. Oh, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see the look on your mother's face when she walks in. <laughs> Anything else, Donna? No. No, nothing. Thanks for letting me be a part of this, Judge Gray. You do back in court. Let's finish this at lunch. Uh, actually, I have a uh, mediation at lunch. Really? I don't see that on the docket. Which case is this? My divorce. Your Honor, the defendant is charged with auto theft, vehicular homicide, and leaving the scene of an accident. This crime occurred when the defendant was 15. Mr. Thompson, you're a little late showing up. Yes, uh, Mr. Thompson aged out of the system four years ago and is now 20. We're requesting that he be tried as an adult and asking that he be held pending the hearing. With all due respect, my client turned himself in as soon as he became aware of the charges. He's clearly not a flight risk and should be released on his own recognizance. He turned himself in only after an accomplice gave him up as part of a plea bargain. Why didn't you surrender yourself sooner, Mr. Thompson? Your Honor, I was afraid. And I was just a kid. Not a day has gone by that I haven't thought about what I did. I, I was at a party. I, I guess I was a little drunk. There's this guy, Carl, who said he knew how to hotwire cars. So we found this Jeep, and I started driving. Faster than I should have. I thought I hit something, but I didn't know what. I wasn't even really sure I had. And Carl said that we should ditch the car, and we did. The next day, it was on the news. Some guy got killed in a hit and run. I know that I should have come forward and told someone, but I didn't know what would happen to me, and I was scared. This is a good kid, Your Honor. He hadn't been in trouble before, and he certainly hasn't been since. He has a part-time job, he volunteers as a big brother, and he's on the dean's list at Harvard. I'm not impressed, Mr. Ross. It's a college, not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Your Honor, in light of Ken's rehabilitation, his obvious remorse and his admirable admission here today. We're requesting that all charges be dismissed. Well, uh, this is a very serious crime, counsel. I can't simply dismiss the charges. Uh, I'm going to set another hearing for this tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock. Until then, Mr. Thompson is released. Hello. Yes. You sent me a copy of your magazine, Retirement Living, and I never ordered it. No, I'm not interested. I don't care if it's free. I have no use for it. Because I'm calling from work, that's why. Are we still on for lunch this week? Because I want to take you out for your birthday. For lunch is fine. For my birthday is not. And the same goes for office parties. Maxine, you know we always celebrate. Not mine. This department is overworked enough not to take the extra time to eat another piece of bad cake. Maxine Gray. I see. Where are they? How many and what are their names? All right. I'll be there. What is it? Parents going after each other during a child exchange. The police are on their way. How many kids? Three. People can't be civilized for one minute for the sake of their own children. Uh, uh, you need some help? Yes. Stay here, and if you hear anything about a party for me tomorrow, squelch it. So... Why did you choose mediation? Uh, we have a daughter. We don't want to end up hating each other. Yeah, we both want this to be as easy as possible. Good, let's start with division of property. Now, you've gone over your assets, stocks, bonds, personal possessions. Uh, split everything we got together 50-50. Except for that pewter urinal that your Aunt Grace gave us. <laughs> you mean the vase? Well, it's, she says it's a vase, but you can't put flowers in it. <laughs> you no, know, you can. There's just no reason to. Well, I want you to have that forever. <laughs> Thanks. What's happening with the marital home? Uh, we have an apartment in New York, which uh, Amy moved out of with Lauren, and I'm still living there. Mm -hmm. And if he ever decided to move? Uh, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. What about spousal support? I don't want it. 
Lauren lives with you full-time? Yes. All I'm really asking for is an increase in child support. And this has been agreed to as well? Not exactly. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm not making nearly as much as I was before, and without Michael's salary, it's hard. I, I just want Lauren to have whatever she needs. Okay. Uh, obviously, this is another issue we'll, we'll explore further. Now, uh, I'm assuming the custody arrangement is staying the same? Yes. Uh, actually, um, I've, I've, thought, I've thought about it, and I'd like to have more time with her. More time? <laughs> you miss half of your scheduled days with Lauren as it is. Well, what, what is your current arrangement? Uh, he's supposed to take her every other weekend, but it usually ends up being closer to once a month. Well, I was hoping we could work out a more structured visitation agreement. Maybe alternate weeks. <laughs> That's ridiculous. She has school. Well, it doesn't have to be that. I haven't really thought it out. No, uh, you haven't. <laughs> you can't just uh, change around your daughter's living arrangements on a whim. I agree. So let's make it legal. Why are you doing this? Because, Amy, I miss her. I miss being her father. You and we're all coward. Your kids are ashamed of you. Because you have poisoned them against me. You always blame someone else. They see you sleeping with that piece Damn. of garbage. Hey, and calm down. Go. A man-hating, screeching witch. Take a look at yourself, you sniveling worm of a man. Yeah, and you're a manipulative bitch. I can't believe you would do this in front of them. Like I started You it. did. And you're not idiots. They can see it for themselves. Just Shut the hell up. I'm Maxine Gray. I'm DCF. If you're taking these parents, do it, please. Oh. Don't take my mom. He started it. See, now do you see hey, what she's done on. to them? I'm not leaving my baby. Please, please. Mom, please. Mom, please. I'm going to go with Dad. Go. No, you don't, Ted. No, you Come on, don't. let's go. Next. My name is Maxine, and I'm a social worker. You must be Sally. They won't let us go with our mom. I know. I know, sweetheart. I know you want to be with your mom right now, but I'm afraid you can't be for a little while. Why not? Well, your mom and dad are very angry at each other. But I'm, I'm going to take care of you until they work that out. How's that sound? But he always starts it. No, he doesn't. Listen, listen. I know that this is not what you want to be doing, but we're going to make the best of it. I promise you. And I hope that, uh, that you can be with your parents again very soon. Are they getting arrested? The police just need to talk to them, that's all. Is anybody here hungry? Now, I can fix that right away. What are you hungry for? Popsicle. Popsicle. Right. We can find a popsicle. Uh, you got some things? All parties are waiting for you in court. Are you okay? I had to call a divorce lawyer today. I thought you were doing mediation. I go once more visitation. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? I have a sister who went through this. It got ugly. Well, I, I don't think Michael's going to do anything extreme, but when it comes to custody... You can't take any chances. Right. Hmm. Y your sister's case, how did it end up? You should just concentrate on your own situation. Your Honor, a few months ago, my client's ex-husband learned their daughter didn't want to be a doctor. Shortly after that, he stopped paying her tuition. You're currently a sophomore at Amherst? Go ahead, Ellen. Answer her. Uh, it was until a week ago. Now they won't let me back into class. It's not only unfair, Your Honor, it's humiliating. Don't you even care about your own daughter anymore? Uh, uh, Mr. Keene, according to the original divorce decree, your client agreed to pay for his daughter's college education and medical school. Is that correct? As your honor points out, the contract specifically says college and medical school. They're linked. And my client should not be required to pay for college if Miss Reeves has decided not to enter medical school. And furthermore, Mr. Reeves has no legal responsibility to support his daughter beyond the age of 18, other than the divorce decree. A contract he entered into voluntarily and based upon his understanding that she wanted to be a doctor. She was seven years old. Your Honor, my client is an executive who travels all over the country to do his job. He relies very heavily on commissions. And... Where are you going with this? Well, I would like to... I'm remarried, Your Honor, with two young sons. I'd like to cut back on my travel, which means significantly less income. 
Of course, I won't do that if Ellen wants to go to medical school, but if she's not going, I don't believe it's a sacrifice I should have to make. All right. Uh, I'm going to need to see financial statements from both of you. Your Honor, please, this is not a question of finances. It's a question of interpreting a divorce decree. And as such, my client should not be required to disclose his income. Well, first of all, counsel, you brought up the issue of his earnings. But as you must know, ability to pay is always an issue in support matters. We'll meet again after I've had a chance to go over the statements. Uh, no, you may not put me on hold. I need to speak to Linda Farrell now. Um... I see. Never mind. Well, it seems your Aunt Linda is still on vacation. I don't like her anyways. She smells bad. Well, then it's a good thing that she's out of town. Is there anybody else that you ever stay with? Grammy. Grammy? Grammy lives in Virginia, stupid. Well, that's not stupid. It's just, uh, it's a little too far. We could stay with you. And I would be happy to have you. All three of you. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed. Because you're too old? No. I'm never getting old or married. Me neither. Me neither. I suppose. My client is in no way challenging Miss Gray's status as the primary caretaker here. In my experience, Roland, when a lawyer uses the term my client, it means he's going for the jugular. My client wants to spend oh, more time. Oh, for God's sakes, use his name. Michael. They were married. My client wants to spend more time with his daughter. Well, he isn't using the time he has now. Well, that'll change. I'm working half days, and the rest of the time I check in from home. We'd like to reconsider summer break, holidays, and weekends. Weekends? What weekends? You get her all week. All weekends? Three out of four. In the summer. Uh, I want to be reasonable about this, so why don't you use the time you have now, and if you want more, then, then we'll work it out. You know, to be honest with you, I'm not comfortable with you dictating the terms. I get to have a say. I didn't even want this divorce. Oh, really? Well, you moved in with somebody a month after I left, so you adjusted pretty quickly. Can we all calm down here? And as I recall, one of your uh, original complaints was that I paid too much attention to Lauren. Does that sound like a devoted father? Things are different now. My client wants joint custody. Joint physical custody? Michael, that, that is not at all what we discussed. My client wants more input on the minor's major life decisions. Education, health care, religious separation. You're an atheist. You don't have a religion. That, that's, what, that's what atheist means, without a religion. It's not just a religion. It's everything. I'm letting her live with letting you. Letting her? I just want to be more involved in her life. We can talk about visitation. Otherwise, this meeting is over. In that case, we'll be moving for joint custody. In that case, my client and I will see you in court where I will be going for your jugular. I'll fight you, Michael. Look, I was hoping it wouldn't be like this. No, that went really well, honey. We flushed them out in the open. Set them hiding behind that mealy mouth bowl. We're okay. We're good. Look down. Just look straight. <laughs> look at that. What do you think of that? How'd you do that? I don't know. I don't know. We just kept trying. Oh. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Well, Amy, she was going to learn eventually. It just happened to be with me. Well, you, you, you must have had some trick. No, I didn't. You just let go and she kept on riding? Yep. <laughs> like the point is, she can ride. Look, Mommy, I can ride! I see. That's great. <laughs> Uncle Vincent explained it better than you did. No, I didn't. I really didn't. Oh. No, no, it's all right. It's okay. I can't do anything. It's, it's, it's all right. We're not here to figure out who was at fault yesterday. He knows it makes me crazy when he brings that slut with him around my children. Mrs. Lawler, you're out of order. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm up against all the time, Your Honor. Now you're out of order. Either of you says anything else, it's going to cost you. This is crazy. I can't believe this. Muttering counts, Mrs. Lawler. That's going to cost you $100. <laughs> that's $200 for you, Mr. Lawler. I'm looking for three. Have I made my point? Ms. Gray, 
I understand you have a solution you'd like to present before the court? My best solution isn't repeatable in open court, Your Honor. Maxine, please, I'm on my last good nerve here. Yes, Your Honor. It's become perfectly clear that these two parents Objection. are Objection. Oh, I find it very self-aware that they object to being called parents, Your Honor. Maxine? It's the way she said it, Your Honor. Dripping with disdain. I apologize for trotting out my dripping disdain, Your Honor. I was saying that the Lawlers are incapable of exchanging their children without becoming violent toward each other. Personally, I couldn't care less if they knock each other silly. Objection! Overruled. There are children involved, and we can't have them exposed to this every time their parents are in the same room. The point, Ms. Gray? DCF is recommending that all future child exchanges be made at the Child Transfer Center under supervision. Objection! One at St. Paul's Episcopal Church on Farm Objection! Avenue. That's 45 minutes away from my house. It's even farther from mine. Far too onerous, Your Honor. This puts a hardship on both parties. If I may, Your Honor. The real victims of this kind of abusive behavior are the children. Objection! And these two parents can't set aside their personal differences for the benefit of their children, well, then I don't see why they should be allowed to hang on to their children at all. This is outrageous. Oh, sit down. I am ordering the supervised transfers for six months, or until such time as you can demonstrate to the satisfaction of Ms. Maxine Gray that you can conduct these exchanges in a civilized manner. Uh, Your Honor, uh, usually... A caseworker would be assigned to this type of follow-up. But you have amply demonstrated how well you understand this case. You all have a good day. If you spend enough time in these hallways, you're bound to pick up a few things. And a bag of chips and a candy bar is not lunch. Well, if it bothers you so much, don't watch. How'd it go this morning? He stuffed his face with bagels while he told me he would let Lauren live with me if I give up weekends, summers, and holidays. He wants to join custody. That bastard. This is not about Lauren. This is about Michael trying to control you. Well, he claims he wants to be a better father. Well, of course, he talks a good game. How'd you like Michael? Amy, he's trying to take your daughter away from you. Now, this is not the time to go soft. Well, Mom... Try and keep in mind that Michael has a talent for talking you out of your instincts. Yes. And he insists on having his own way. Remember, he went on that three-week camping trip when she was just an infant. Well, that was prearranged. Why are you defending him? Maybe I think he's good at heart. And I believe I can reach that part of him again. Amy, it's very hard to support you when you keep switching sides. Ken has been Miguel's big brother for three years, since he was nine. After Miguel's father died, he got into a lot of trouble. Smoking, alcohol, skipping school, stealing. Ken stopped all that. How is Miguel doing now? He goes to school, his grades are better. He doesn't get into trouble anymore, because he has a role model. Ken. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. Please don't take Ken away, Your Honor. Miguel needs him. Uh, Mr. Uh, Reimers, I don't seem to have anyone listed here to uh, speak on the victim's behalf. That is correct, Your Honor. Oh, why is that? Because there is no one. His name was Danny Taylor. He was 32 years old. His address at the time of his death was the lighthouse shelter. His blood alcohol level at the time of his death was 0. .40. That is five times the legal maximum. Uh, Mr. Reimers, which side of this case are you arguing? Judge Gray, this is the United States of America. Your Honor, does Mr. Reimers intend to call George Washington as a witness? Lives are not quantifiable in the United States of America. We are all created equal. A fine, upstanding young man who attends Harvard and devotes his time to helping fatherless children is worth no more in the eyes of the law than a homeless man in the gutter. I shouldn't have to call any witnesses to bolster the worth of Danny Taylor's life. 
He was a man. He lived and then he died. Because this man got drunk and stole a car and ran him over and then left him to die. As though he were worth nothing. Dinner, Michael. Without lawyers. Yeah, I was thinking Connolly's. Uh, certainly. I can wait while you check your calendar. Did you look at any of the financial statements in the Reeves case? No. Uh... The last two years are identical. Uh, eight. Uh, could we uh, make it nine? Because then I could put Lauren to bed. You, you would still be able to take the 1107 back into the city. You mean comparable? I mean indistinguishable. Uh, okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's make it eight then. Because you have to control everything, Mr. Anal Retentive. Wow, you can really multitask, can't you? I'm a mom. Let's dispense some justice. Uh, Mr. Reeves, did you win the lottery last year? Um, no, Your Honor. Well, your financial statement for this year is identical in every regard to your statement for the preceding year. Your Honor, are you suggesting that my client is hiding something? Yes. Mr. Reeves sold all his stock holdings last year, as well as the car and several personal items. He took out a second mortgage on the house. I'm suggesting that your client is hiding the fact that he's financially unstable. I think he's hiding the fact that he's unemployed. Daddy? It's, um, it's true, Your Honor. I was laid off and didn't work for nearly a year. I'm back on track, but I depleted my savings. I... I didn't want Ellie to know that. I couldn't stand the thought of uh, letting Ellie down. Judge, can we just forget this whole thing? No, I'm afraid we can't. Uh, according to the records, Mr. Reeves still manages to send his two sons to Milton Academy, a private school whose tuition exceeds $10,000 a year per child. Your Honor, Mr. Reeves is an alumnus of the school. It's a time-honored tradition. Well, that may be. But Mr. Reeves is looking to relieve himself of certain financial obligations. He considers his daughter's college tuition to be an extravagance, while he considers his son's educations to be a necessity. That's not fair. Please, don't make me choose between my children, Judge. You're already doing that, Mr. Reeves, and I can't allow it. I understand you have a new family to support. We live in a world of multiple choices. But along with that come multiple responsibilities. This is a lifetime commitment. Your obligation to your daughter does not change with your circumstances. You have to be as good as your word. I will not modify this divorce decree. When you said you wanted to see more of Lauren, uh, what I heard was that you wanted to take her away. And I freaked out. And I'm sorry for that. Okay, good, because I don't want to take her away, I mean. You want to be more involved in her life, and that's a good thing. That's all I'm saying. So if we can both agree to put Lauren first, then we can, uh, we can get through this. I just don't think it's good for her to be shuttled back and forth so much, that's all. A couple more weekends. And the holidays worry me because she's just started to, um, to adjust. So what if I took Easter and Christmas, you took uh, Fourth of July and Thanksgiving, and the rest we talked? Christmas. Oh, you hate Christmas, Michael. Yeah, still, it's like uh, I pay out all this money and I don't get to see the look on Lauren's face. So it's about money? Not at all. Except that, you know, I'm not going to be making what I'm making now forever. As you know, the turnover for currency traders is very high. Well, I'm, I've never asked for alimony. I'm not about to start now. No, There's the issue of child support. It's like Christmas. I pay out all this money and I don't get the pleasure of seeing how it benefits Lauren. Well, child support is not about paying to make you feel better, Michael. Don't don't start moralizing, Amy. It's a legal issue. It's our daughter, and I'm not going to barter with well, you. Well, you will if a judge orders you to. Well, any judge worth her salt would reprimand you for attaching money to custody. Why, why are you doing this? Hey, you're the one who moved to Connecticut and cut her income. And now you want me to pay for it. So you're mad at me and you're taking it out on Lauren. Well, that is it's despicable. Not the issue. You know what? I really think it is. Listen, wait, wait. What are you doing? I don't want to see your face anymore. Amy, Amy! Slides are in order, don't worry. Great. Mom is gonna love this. Amy, Mom has always hated her birthday. Why should this year be any different? It's her 60th. It's 
some milestone. Why, you still think we should cancel? Uh, yep, absolutely, without a doubt, you think that. No. Well, so long as my opinion means something to you. Since when do you wear a tie? <laughs> I got a meeting with my editor. And, um, Michael called. He wants to meet for a drink. Why would you do that? I don't know. I've known the guy since I was a kid. Amy, we have our own relationship. Yeah. And now I'm in a huge custody battle with him. Are you kidding me? I thought you worked that out. No. Nope. And he's using you to get to me. Come on, he's not that kind of guy. You want to bet? Look, Amy, this has nothing to do with you. Michael and I didn't have much of a chance to catch up over Thanksgiving. But there are times when I was closer to Michael than I was to Peter. He was interested in literature. He turned me on to Russell Banks. He's showing off. That's what he does. You, you met him right after Dad died. You, you were looking for a hero. <sighs> Look, I'm, I'm not taking sides here. You're my sister. Exactly. And if family doesn't stick by you, who will? You want me to cancel, I'll cancel. No, no, you... You do what you think is right. So I'm guessing you have plans for your birthday tonight. Yes, avoiding everyone. Does that include me? Well, that depends. Are you planning to sing? Well, I just want to take you out for a drink, and if you don't like it, I promise I will not make you stay for dinner. What kind of drinks? Flaming Bahama Mamas. Okay. But I'm serious, Tanya. If you bring a present, I'm not even staying for the drink. Five years ago, Ken Thompson did something he now regrets. We've heard a lot of testimony about what kind of a person Ken is. His uh, academic accomplishments, his dedication as a big brother. And ever present in our minds is the fact that the victim was a man who did not contribute much to our society. A marginal citizen. During the five years since the accident, Mr. Thompson has turned from a, a reckless youth into a fine, upstanding young man. Perhaps too much of a fine, upstanding young man. Your Honor. In the past five years, Mr. Thompson has thrived. He hasn't looked back. He hasn't been in therapy. He has no addictions. He maintains relationships. In other words, he's come through this whole ordeal unscathed. This has been a very hard decision for me. It's a very seductive argument to let Mr. Thompson off the hook because his life is going in, in such a great direction. But I can't look forward. I have to look back to the last five years during which every day Mr. Thompson decided that his future was more important than another man's life. I am remanding you to the custody of the criminal court to be tried and, if convicted, sentenced as an adult. You really ought to move to the city, but much more you're seeing. You gotta get out of Hartford. Well, you haven't been there since they built the rock in the ball. <laughs> Seriously, if you're ready, I can help you find an apartment. You don't have to talk me into liking you, Michael. You got me today to let me drive your Porsche. Well, that was to impress your sister. I guess those days are over. Yeah, but things change. You guys are gonna get past this point. I hope so. I've always felt two people, two rational people, could work things out without it getting ugly, but... Uh... I don't know, I guess that's what divorce is. Ugly. Yep. How's work? Whatever happened to that, um, the crazy assistant with the purple hair? It's green now. I promoted her. She's one of our best traders. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mm hmm So how uh, serious do you think Amy is about all this? She doesn't talk to me about it. To be perfectly honest, I try to keep out of it. All I wanted to do was to spend more time with Lauren. Now she, she's threatening to take me to the cleaners. I don't think it's that unreasonable to want to be a part of your daughter's life. You know, and no matter what Amy thinks of me as a person, I'm still Lauren's father. Michael, I can't be in the middle of this. I don't want to be. I know, I know. It's not your battle, but I, I, the whole thing has me confused. Look, I've never been married. 
I haven't even been in a relationship for more than six months. I'm the wrong guy to ask about this. You know what really gets me is the insinuation that she's the better parent. I have always been there for Lauren. She knows that. Mike, come on. What? The weekends you don't even show up. Oh, are you going to start with me now? And, and I'm the one who wants to teach her how to ride a bike. Ah, congratulations. You know, you do the martyr thing as well as your sister. This conversation is over. This is such a mistake. Vincent, I'm sorry. I'm not the bad guy here. I'm just trying to be a good father. Yeah, maybe you're not trying hard enough. Well, Amy's not making it any easier. What? Why is she so angry? What is it? A new job? Living with your mother? What, is she sexually frustrated? <laughs> I told you I was the wrong guy to ask. She could have called, at least. Amy, she was completely clear with you. She didn't want a party. She ditched poor Tanya. Tanya seemed happy to me. Tanya was smashed on Bahama Mamas. Am I the only one who's shocked by her behavior? Yes. yes. Hello. Well, looks like you win this one, Mom. I told you I didn't want a party. Max and Ruth Nielsen drove three hours to get here. Well, you must feel pretty bad putting them through that after I told you I didn't want a party. It's all right, Amy. It was a good party. Cut it out. Stop smearing happy jelly on everything. Amy, I'm sorry I ruined your plans for my birthday. But if it makes you feel any better, I did exactly as I wanted. You know, I put a lot of time into this damn party. I hired a caterer and I had a slideshow and I see you skulking out, Peter. Night, Mom. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Why doesn't anyone in this family back me up on this? It was my birthday. Mom, that's where you got it wrong. Because some things, like a 60th birthday, are bigger than the person. We love you. We wanted to celebrate it with you. We had a right to do that. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Good night. Not a word from you, traitor. Hey, I already defended you once today. What are you talking about? Um, I punched your ex-husband. You what? I think I split his lip. <laughs> Vincent. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. I mean, this is not going to be good for the custody thing. It's just he was so smug and he was mouthing off. You're not upset? Shut up. Let me adore you. <laughs> You can kiss me. You're supposed to be asleep. Is the party over? Uh, yeah. The bike lives in the garage, okay? Okay. I can't wait to show Daddy that I can ride a bike. What do you think he'll say? I think he'll say... That's my girl. But, Ma, what's wrong? You didn't read my living will. You woke me up at 2 in the morning to tell me that? I could have a stroke tonight. Well, appealing as that notion is right now, I'm going back to sleep. Amy, this is important. Why? Why, for God's sake, you're not going to die? We're all going to die. That's not the point. Then what is? I'm a judge. I know what a living will is. I don't have to read it. Yes, you do. Why? Because of tonight. Because you don't listen to me, Amy. Because if something happens to me, I want the doctors to do what I want them to do and not what you think is best for me out of some misguided sense of love or loyalty or fear of loss.
Okay, I've read it. Initial it. Oh, Ma. Please. Thank you. That's just what I wanted for my birthday. Hey, Mom. Now can I have what I wanted for your birthday? Are guests involved? No guests. <laughs> my father took that one. <sighs> Life is a big circle. If I lose a few more teeth and start drooling, I'm going to be right back there. Wearing a few more clothes, I hope. <laughs> nice hairdo, Mom. <laughs> What else you got? 